हे गाइज आई एम बैक विद द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ आर ग्रोसरी ई कॉमर्स ऐप यूजिंग डॉट नेट माओवी सो इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी आर वर्किंग ऑन दिस पॉपुलर प्रोडक्ट सेक्शन वी वर्क ऑन दिस यू आई यूजिंग फ्लैक्स ले आउट बाइंडिंग ले आउट एंड डेटा ट्रिगर्स सो वी कैन सी एवरी थिंग ओके एंड इन दिस वीडियो वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सट्रैक्ट आउट दिस ले आउट so right now these popular products this section we have this on our home page only but when we will implement this categories page category wise products needs to be displayed so the layout for this will be same so we don't want to duplicate the layout so instead what we will do we will create a reusable control and we will use the same control on this home page for popular products and on the category products page for uh, for all the products related to that particular category fine so before continuing this one i would recommend you guys to check out all the previous parts of this video series i am going to drop the links of all those parts in the description so please do check those out before continuing on this one fine <coughs> so first thing we need to we already have a controls folder which has a spacer control so we'll create a new item here and that is going to be our dot net maui content view with xaml and this we'll call it let's say products list control or just products list but with control only let's do this hmm products list control fine and in this products list control let's copy this flex layout completely copy this and move it to this products control.xaml so we'll remove this vertical stack layout and we'll have it here fine and then we had some styling for this as well so that styling that was this add to cart button cart button these two so copy these comment these out and comment this flex layout as well fine on this products list control dot xaml we'll have our styles so content view dot resources resource dictionary and we'll have our styles here fine now we need this namespace dto product dto so let's copy this as well from here we'll get this namespace mm -hmm. this namespace we are good okay so everything is in place the only thing is we need to get these popular products but we don't have these popular products here so we need these popular products from its parent so for this we'll have a bindable property in here in product list control so let's create that so public static read only bindable property and we'll call it products only because this is not going to be used only for popular products but it will be used for all the products list in our complete app wherever we are showing the product list basically so products property fine and here we will say bindable property dot create we will do this before that we will create a property of type enumerable of product dto and we'll call it products products fine and now in here bindable property dot create first parameter is property name which we have as products second is return type so return type is going to be type of i enumerable of product dto okay then declaring type so who is declaring this type so the declaring type is this class which is product list control 
next one is default value so default value will have enumerable dot empty product dto this will have as a default value fine now next thing we need to bind this products property with this products property here so what we'll do here let's remove this and here we'll say get when we are getting it we'll use get value with this products property and <clears throat> when we are setting value we'll say set value products property and value and we need to type cast this get value to actual type and fine cool let's clean this up and we are good now we need to use this products uh, property on this page it's xaml basically so we'll use products we are not having intellisense that's because we have not defined the data type for this this page and before that we need to add the namespace so we'll say let's say controls controls and this is going to oh this controls and the data type is going to be this same page which is product list control where we have this products category and we are good with this the only change we need to do is to bind this products we are getting these products we set this data type but this is just to say just to give us intellisense support but we need to bind this class to this flex layout as a binding context so for this what we'll do first we'll set a name for this let's make it this only and for this bindable layer this flex layout we'll set the binding context with static resource not static resource x reference and we are accessing this so we are saying the binding context for this flex layout is this and what is this this is this control content view so this content view is this products list control and it has this products property and now everything should behave same fine we have this thing here now let's use this on our uh, home page right on our home page right now we have commented the styles and we have commented out this uh, this flex layout right so first let's run this app but before that let me stop the api it is freaking out first let me run the api start without debugging and then let me run this app app is here and we cannot see popular products and that is expected we are not having flex layer so let's use the products list control and we need to pass the products bindable property with binding and binding popular products from here let's run and we can see the same thing right we have this for zero we have this add button we have this that means our data triggers are working everything is working as expected right fine so now we can clean this up we can remove this commented uh, code but we'll clean it up or yeah let's first clean it up then we'll work on this add button and these buttons to increase and decrease this card quantity for that particular product cool so let's come here we'll remove this and from styles 
we'll remove this fine okay now let's go to our content view we are here and from here or here let's do one thing what we can do mm, on our home page view model uh, where is our view models home page view models let's have the events here to increase and decrease the items from the count or cart we could say we'll implement the cart item and all that functionality later but right now we are just uh, we are simply uh, moving ahead step by step right so if you remember the initial code and now we are actually moving progress first i show you how we can do this then i show you what is the better way to do it and we are learning on the way basically fine so on this view model what we'll say we'll have private task and not task private void let's say add to cart and we'll expect a product id to this and yeah just product id for now let's add the relay command for this because we need to use this not we need to we will actually relay command and in here what we'll do we'll find the product from our popular products collection view this observable collection or collection view so popular products dot first will always have first so there's no point of using first or default but if you want you could use first or default so what we'll do we'll simply get p dot id equals equals to p id if product is not null and that of course will not nev will never be null but this is the bad best uh, best practice basically so when product is not null now we have product and what we'll do here we'll simply update its card quantity okay whatever card quantity we had earlier we'll simply increment it by one and the same thing we'll do when we are removing from cart so remove from cart same thing in product id and we could use the same command with multiple parameters also so it's up to us how we are envisioning it so we could say something like add remove from cart or maybe update cart and we will expect two parameters product id and let's say int count and this count if this count is minus one we will uh, consider it as removing from cart and if this count is one or greater than zero we'll consider it as adding to cart so that is also a way so let's do one thing okay let's uh, merge both of these things right so what we'll do we'll have a private method here private void update cart and here we'll do that thing which i just said so product id and count so we'll copy this thing here add it here and instead of doing this my plus plus what we'll do we'll simply say count this means if it was minus one it will automatically be decremented and if this is plus then it will be added and from these things what we'll do here we'll simply say update cart with this product id and one and the same thing we'll do from remove from cart with one change and that one change is it will be minus one <clears throat> cool so we now have these two commands add to cart and remove from cart which is actually modifying this observable collection to be displayed on the ui cool now we need to trigger these events trigger these commands basically execute these commands and this is in home page view model 
and in home page if we check we are accessing this product list control so actual buttons for adding and removing from cart those exist in this product list control where we do not have uh, the home page view model right and we cannot inject anything in the custom controls these content views so we cannot inject that home page view model here and even if we were able to we had to have that as uh, there could be different instances so that could also be an issue so the way we are going to do it we'll uh, expose an event from this product list control and on the home page we'll react to that event we'll handle that event and from that event we will simply trigger or execute these add to cart and remove from cart commands that is what we are going to do fine so what we'll do here in here let's add a command public event event handler not products changed we'll say let's say add or remove cart click something like this fine now we need to when we are adding or removing from cart we need to pass the product id and did we clicked on add to cart or remove from cart so we need to pass two different piece of information so we cannot use this direct event args so we could have used this int int the value tuple but this is not a good practice but we can use but when we are dealing with events so we already have a pattern so why not use that pattern and that pattern is we'll create a derived class for event args from that event args so what we'll do we'll say product card item uh, event args something like product card item change event args event args and it will be a subclass of event args and here we'll have two properties one is for product id and the other one for uh, let's say count let's add a constructor to our uh, to make it easy to pass the value to this is not required but yeah i like this approach handy so from here we'll simply pass this type of data add remove card clicked and now if we go to home page dot saml where we have this products list control here we can see that add remove card clicked event and we can add a event handler here product list control event add remove parts find this one here we have this event args and here we have these view models so what we are going to do we are going to trigger those things here so what are those things those are if e dot count if this is greater than zero or in our case we are dealing with uh, we are dealing with minus one and plus one right so we could have used minus one and plus one directly or maybe oh, let's let make it like this only if this is greater than zero that means we are adding to cart so we'll do view model dot add to cart command dot execute and we need to provide our parameter that is product id that we can get from product id and if that's not the case that means we are removing from the card if that is equal zero less than zero that is minus one in that case let's do this view model dot remove from card command dot execute e dot product id cool so we have binded this piece of code now next thing is 
on this page we have defined this event but we are not and we are handling this event but we are not triggering this event so we need to trigger this event and this should be triggered when we click on add or remove buttons those lives in this product uh, list control these buttons add to cart and these buttons right so from here we need to trigger those so what we can do we can do something similar here as well so we'll say public or let's say private we'll use the same uh, mvvm here also private void add to cart and here we'll simply expect a product id and okay and from here we'll uh, trigger this event we'll raise this event so add remove cart click dot invoke sender and then the event argument so first one is product id which we received from here second one is count which is one in this case because we are adding to the card okay now we need to uh, change this to command so for that we can use relay command and then next thing for second one we'll use the similar approach let me copy this then we'll say private void remove from card same thing in product id do this do this and this time we'll give minus one and we'll change it to relay command fine add to cart remove from cart we have these things here only we already set this at binding context so we can trigger these commands and this is static button zero minus so this button from here we are actually uh, what we are decreasing we are removing from the card items right so for this command we will say binding and this for this binding the source is going to be because this exists inside an item for this flex layout we need to somehow come out of this data template and navigate further on the top to this content and on this we have uh, our command basically fine so for that what we'll do uh, where is it binding source this is going to be a relative source ancestor type and this type is going to be this type which is our product list control type products x not reference type product list control okay and on this product list control the command we are looking for that is remove from card command okay and we need to pass a command parameter as well for this so that parameter that command is binding uh, id this is the product id right so let me copy these two lines and add these to this add to cart this thing here and we'll change this remove from cart command to add to cart command add to cart command and let me copy this thing the same thing we'll use when we have the main button which is without uh, this plus and minus sign this one now everything is in place everything should work as expected let's run or before running let's fix this so now we do not have to use this let's run we have this data 
and we clicked on it we removed it nothing is happening we clicked on it two three four five six seven eight nine ten and ui just broke minus is not working plus is working right add to cart this also work plus two three four five but it already took two and three and four that means there is some um, uh, we could say would disbalance something it took from cash because right now we remove this underscore card quantity that means it should have zero for all the items but we could see some of the things so that means we need to stop it and let's clean this and run it again I uninstalled the app, cleaned the this dot and by project and running it. Let's see. Data is here, app is here. Let's see, and still we have one, two, two, and we can plus, we can not minus. I am actually a bit confused how it can have this default values. okay we'll check it but for now the plus is working but remove from cart is not working so we have missed something somewhere so let's go one by one first from our product list xaml when we are clicking on minus that is this one we are removing from cart with this id remove from cart command let's copy this name if we have it right move from cart and i think we make some yeah we made typo remove from cart rerun okay let's see this time and yeah plus and minus are working and okay let's do this clean this app again so maybe it's some caching issue or what issue i am not sure if you guys know something or you figured out something please do let me know in the comment why it is picking up these values right and now if we check our functionality is working we can increase the items we can remove the items and when there are no items this layout switches back to that single add button so that, that means our functionality our binding custom control and our events and commands all these things are working as they should be right fine so that's all for this video in the next part what we are going to do we are going to display a floating action button here which will act as a, we could say the info about the number of products we have in the cart so for example if i go back i remove everything mm -hmm. i remove everything now there is no product so that should not be here and when we click on it it should show one item if we keep on increasing quantity of the same item it should say only single item only because it should show the number of products are added in the card and if we add any other then it should show two not ten and when we click on it it should navigate to the main card page where we'll see the product with quantity list and all these things right so that we'll do in our next part please like this video share this video subscribe my channel and don't forget to press that bell icon so that whenever i uh, upload any new video you will get notification and you can continue this series and please do let me know in the comment if you are enjoying this series if you are learning something new in this series and if you are not learning something and if you are not finding it amazing then maybe we can work on something else because what i see the number of views i'm getting for this series i'm uh, putting a lot of time i have a full-time job i have a two-year-old kid i need to take care of it i need to work then i 
work on some side projects and learnings and then i find time to make these videos but i'm not getting the response which i am expecting actually i have more than 1k subscribers and almost 1.2k and the views i'm getting on these videos these are hardly 100 views 200 views and that is not what i want so please share this video and drop me comment that what is the issue what do you think is the issue why these videos are not getting so much views okay okay bye bye